Round three of the Ground Tracks Northern Off-Road Championship would see the crews head to Parkwood Off-Road Centre with a good mix of conditions in store for two days of fast-paced competition. Let's head out for the first day's racing then, and it would be the lead for last year's event winner, Ian Gregg. He would be due to take the car to France in a few days, so wasn't doing anything silly, but clearly that approach was working so far. For Simon Adams, it would be second place. The leading crews will be swapping fastest times throughout the day, showing just how close this championship can be. Reaching the end of run six, 18 seconds separating them. Anthony Jackson, meanwhile, leads away in class six, rounding out our podium places overall at this stage as well, nine seconds back from Adams. And it will be a shared drive for Martin and Aston Cox this weekend. Martin taking the wheel on day one. They were finding it tricky being the first car out on the runs, but we're going well with that fourth place at this stage. And with the usual car still not ready, it will be a fight for class two once again for Huggy Farmer and Richard Rawlinson. They might not have been fighting for victory, but things were going well. Fifth place overall, third in the class. No problems at all to report for Luke and John Sagar. They lead the way in class eight at the end of the opening day good lead in the class as well as sixth place overall. It would be only the third event in this new car for Mark Calzoni, but he was getting used to it pretty quickly. Seventh place overall, fourth in the increasingly popular class two. And fifth in the class would belong to Richard and Mason Kershaw. 20 seconds back from Calzoni at the end of the day. It was the Class 9 lead, though, for Tim Sagar on the first day. Some good times, putting him inside our top 10 with ninth place as well. And rounding out the top 10 leaderboard would be Mark and Sarah Caisley. The first time at this venue, so day one will be a bit of a taster for what was to come throughout the rest of the weekend's competition. In some of the places outside the top 10, it would be 11th overall for Ian Goodyear. Second in Class 8 with those times as well. And it was a different car for Andrew West this season, switching to the Class 8 car and lying third in that class as well as 12th overall. Ronnie Hoyle will be having a much better start to the event, the car not making it off the trailer at the opening round. This time out though, it was off the trailer and it was working as it should, lying in 13th place overall, second in Class 9. There'd been some late nights to get the car ready for this round for Richard Cooper and Adam Turner but it was paying off, third in the class, 14th overall. For Keith Lynham, it will be 15th on the leaderboard. No problems to report and lying fourth in class eight as well. For Daryl Ruffin and Matt Rothwell, it will be fifth in that class. A puncture wasn't helping with the times overall or in the class though. And Stephen Hamm and Sue Maynard will be the only crew in class four this weekend so they'd be concentrating on that overall result. For now, it was 18th place. It would be a great start to the event for Craig Mason, taking the lead in Class 3 at the end of the opening day. It wouldn't, however, be such a good start for Becca Clarkson and Lauren Widdup. They break down on the sighting lap, having to change the proper shaft bearing, meaning they start the day late, having to play catch-up. They end, though, with 21st place overall. Back to that Class 3 battle then, and it will be second in the class for Dave Wilson and Tom Smith. Their only issue will be the washer pipe coming off, soaking the driver's legs. There are worse problems to have out here. For Mark Walker, it will be 23rd overall, lying fourth in Class 9 at this stage in the event. And with the car only just finished after hitting a tree last time out, it will be 24th for Richard Hay and Ian Garlick. They would certainly be wanting to avoid the trees again this time out after all that hard work. Gareth Davies, meanwhile, will be having a few problems stalling the car and getting it restarted. It wasn't helping his times, as you might expect. Second in Class 5, though, would be his, as well as 25th on the leaderboard. And it was a maximum on Run 3, putting Tom Wood down the order a little the airflow meter coming off and causing him to stop mid-run, 27th overall at the end of the day. It wasn't a great event so far for Ian and Lee Davidson either. They go off on stage three, no damage, but strip reverse gear trying to get back on the stage. End of the road for the pair. 
and it would also be the end of the day for Justin Birchall, retiring on the third run of the day, saving the car for an event in France in a few days' time. The attrition would continue. Run three also signaling the end of the event for Ben Middleton and Steph Turner, breaking the suspension and having to retire. And it was an even sooner retirement for Steve Hill and Jenny Canterbury, snapping the steering on the first run of the day when they hit a tree. So a reminder then of the results at the end of the first day. Ian Gregg in a good position for a repeat win here this weekend. Good day today for you? Yes, um, haven't sat in the car since we did France last year. Uh, first time to actually literally sit in the car in anger. Um, yeah, going well. We are preserving the car because we're going to France on Tuesday. Uh, so we're trying to take it steady, but uh, amazingly we seem to be in the lead at the moment, which is quite a shock. Good day for you. Now the rain's here. Is this going to be a problem for tomorrow? Uh, possibly. We've got, we've got um, some direct shows and some newer altering, so we'll have a go tomorrow. Try and catch them two in front. Simon and Ian are doing really well. Up, up in front, but um, we'll go out and catch them tomorrow. That's the plan. And that's two buggies. So, are you finding that the buggies are better here than the than the actual cars? Yeah, towards the latter end of the lap, there's um, there's quite a lot of twisty sections through. And it's really night, uh, tight and narrow through the trees and stuff. And they just, I think they might just be gaining on us there and stuff. But um, I think I'm just gonna have to drive harder and drive faster. So <laughs> I think that's the uh, the plan for tomorrow. So it's been really good. We've had no problems with the car. It's been running really well. Um, we're struggling to keep up with the other cars with the turbo varieties but we struggled to get that six minutes but we brought that six minutes on the last run putting a 557 in so we're quite competitive we're just lacking a little bit on the horsepower yeah we've been doing all right we're um, i think we're currently running sixth overnight so I'm chuffed to bits with that it's um it's going well we haven't had it's just been a steady day really with um no dramas putting some good times down i think on his last run today we got um stuck behind a car that got stuck at woods that cost us 10 seconds but it hasn't cost us any positions, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, it's been really good. We've completed all six runs now, and it's gone really well. Still cutting our teeth with a new car. It's on my third event, but I'm really pleased, and you know, it's going okay. It's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Like this, uh, it's the first time I've been out, really, for, uh, I think, this time last year. Well, last time I were out, just had a few problems, blue diffs last year. Then we get, I was supposed to be doing it full season this year, and... Uh, Drove it onto the trailer, went down to Wickenby, I think it was, and it just sat there, wouldn't start, and we've been bat been battling it ever since. Like old Wayne that owns Chip Wizards, he's had it on Rolling Road a couple of times, and uh, looking like he's got it right well set up, and it seems to be flying. Really enjoying this place. On we go to day two then, and there would be no change in the lead of the event. Ian Gregg continuing to hold a good advantage in that position midway through the second day. For Simon Adams, it would still be second. He wasn't managing to catch the leader, but he was managing to hold a good advantage in that second place himself. And indeed, no change in the final step on the podium either. Anthony Jackson remaining in that position, finding the course slippery though for the first runs of the day. It could still change. It was a similar story for Aston and Martin Cox. The slippery conditions making the first run a little slower than they would have liked but some new tyres for the next run would transform the car back to how it should be performing. First in class, fourth overall was exactly that. Richard and Mason Kershaw gain a few positions over the morning runs, moving their way up to fifth overall now, and indeed moving into third in the class as well. This, of course, for the eagle-eyed of you, would be at the expense of this man, Huggy Farmer, with Richard Rawlinson alongside, taking a step back to sixth place now, fourth in the class behind Kershaw. Luke and John Sagar would be another not very happy with the morning's tyre choice. They were still going well though, dropping a place on the overall leaderboard, but keeping hold of that class eight lead, crucially. And it would be a place lost to the advances of Kershaw for Mark Calzoni too, down to eighth place overall now, fifth in class two, but still going well this weekend. There's no change in the class nine lead, meanwhile, for Tim Sagar, or indeed to the overall position either, remaining in ninth at this point in the event. And it would still be Mark and Sarah Kaisley rounding out the top 10 as we move into the final runs of the day. 
Andrew West does gain a place in these runs to lie in 11th place on the leaderboard. Also gaining a position in class as well to lie second place. That class position at the expense of Ian Goodyear, now third in the class, 12th overall, just less than a minute back from West. Ronnie Hoyle would still be battling it out in that class nine fight. Second place still at this stage and 13th overall. Meanwhile, it was still Richard Cooper and Adam Turner trying to catch Hoyle with no luck yet though, lying third in the class, 14th overall. Keith Lynham, there would be no change, remaining steady in that 15th place overall, as well as fourth in class eight. There would, however, be some change in that class, as we see Brian Marshall and Gary Reed stepping up to take fifth place in the class now. For Stephen Hamm and Sue Maynard, there would be, of course, no change to the class. They did have an unidentified noise that had developed on the car, though, and would need looking at. Always a worry, especially this close to the end of an event. After that troubled start, it would be much better for day two for Becca Clarkson and Lauren Widdup. A slippery start, but they soon get back up to speed. 19th place for now. There'd be a couple of overshoots for Dave Wilson and Tom Smith this morning, but that only showed that they were trying. Leading class three and 20th overall was another sign. And second in that class would now belong to Craig Mason. Just over half a minute back from Wilson at this stage in the event. There's still no change in the class for Gareth Davies. Second in class five was his, enjoying his return to competition after two years out. No change, meanwhile, for Mark Walker. He remains in 23rd overall, as well as fourth in class nine. And no real problems for Richard Hay and Ian Garlick. The car running a little warm, but it wasn't causing them any issues during their runs. 24th place for them now. There would be problems though for Daryl Ruthven and Matt Rothwell, breaking a prop shaft and sadly having to retire the car. And it would be the end of the road too for Daniel Howarth and Joe Cartwright, bending the steering when they hit a tree. So with the second day now halfway through, the results at the top of the leaderboard remain the same, but some of those positions outside of the podium places were changing run by run. On to the final runs of this event then, and it will be 25th overall and 8th in the class for Glyn and Gemma Smith here at round three. And for Tom Wood, it will be one place higher, 7th in the class, 24th overall. Gareth Davies would take the class five victory, but three punches in a row would mean no advance of the results, settling for a 23rd place overall finish. There'd be no change for Craig Mason in the final runs of the day, taking second place in class three, as well as 22nd overall. A few issues towards the end of the day, not helping progress. No change for Mark Walker either. Fourth place in class nine, 21st overall would be his this weekend. And for Richard Hay and Ian Garlick, it would be 20th overall, finishing a minute ahead of Walker on the overall leaderboard. There'd be late drama though for Dave Wilson and Tom Smith when they hit a tree on run 12, forced to complete the final runs much slower in order to get to the finish. Thankfully, they do remain in the lead of class three to take victory there and take 19th overall at the end of what turned out to be a pretty dramatic and adventurous day for them. There's no change to Ryan Marshall and Gary Reed in the final runs of the day. They take that fifth position in class eight as well as 18th place overall. For Stephen Hamm and Sue Maynard, the afternoon would be spent catching up runs after their earlier problems. They reached the end of the event with a class four victory and 17th overall. There's frustration for Simon Adams though, a broken wheel putting an end to a great run, dropping out of that second place and way down to 16th after a couple of maximums in the final runs of the day. This of course meant a move up overall and in class two for those behind, including Becca Clarkson and Lauren Willop who end the day with fifth in the class, 15th overall. Unfortunately, a maximum on the final run of the day would see Mark and Sarah Kaisley slipping down the order from their 10th place. 
they go into 14th. They do take fourth in class two though. And for Keith Lynham, it will be 13th place to end the event, fourth in class eight. Richard Cooper and Adam Turner take 12th overall. The time is putting them third in class nine by the end of the event too. Ronnie Hoyle would clearly be trying right up to the finish, ending the event just outside our top 10 with 11th place, second in class nine as well ahead of Cooper. On to that top 10 then, and it will be 10th place to end round three for Ian Goodyear, also taking third in class eight with that result. It would be a great result as well for Andrew West, taking second in the class ahead of Goodyear, bringing the car home in ninth place overall too. And things had gone well for Mark Calzoni this weekend, the new car working well and ending the day with eighth place overall, third in class two. For Tim Sagar, it will be the Class 9 victory, a great end to the event and taking 7th place overall, but only a few seconds ahead of Calzoni. Huggy Farmer and Richard Rawlinson, meanwhile, were making the most of their Class 2 outings, 2nd in the class this weekend as well as 6th overall. No problems in the second half of the day for Luke and John Sagar. They managed to keep hold of that Class 8 lead to take victory there, as well as a fantastic fifth place overall. And it will be a Class win too for Richard and Mason Kershaw. They take the Class 2 victory here at Round 3 and finish just outside the podium in fourth. With the gaps either side of them pretty big, it will be a case of getting to the finish for Aston and Martin Cox and taking the final step on the podium in the process. A good end to the event for the pair. For Anthony Jackson, it will be a move up to second with the loss of Simon Adams. A great way to end the event after a strong performance over the weekend. But that, of course, means that there's no change at the top. Ian Gregg taking victory here this weekend. Not bad for someone who was preserving the car for an upcoming event in France. So confirmation then of the times at the top this weekend. A well-deserved victory for Greg and some good points for a number of crews here at round three. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Excellent uh, event. Um, nice to be back in one tongue again, the David Simonite Memorial Trophy. Uh, it's been a very, very good weekend. Weather's been kind to us. Um, I'd like to thank a few people, obviously Nork and everybody that's helped put the event on. My team, uh, Debbie, Gaz, Paz, Ben, um, everybody that's made it happen. Uh, and a big thank you to DJM Motorsport and their input in preparing, helping us prepare the car. Uh, yeah, good result for Greg Motorsport. It, it was a bit slippy this morning. Um, we went on the wrong tyres, unfortunately, on the first lap. Changed them over and been steadily getting quicker and quicker through the day. It's been drying out, which has been helping. Um, but we couldn't, we couldn't catch Ian Gregg, and I think Simon had some problems, but so we managed to clinch that second place. But yeah, really pleased, so really good. How did you get on yesterday? Yeah, not too badly. Um, I set the bar for the old boy for today. Um, we're lying, I think it was fourth overall yesterday, first in the class. Um, yeah, it's a bit wet and slippery with first car out, so the first time wasn't that anything special. I was a bit of disillusioned, but. Um, on the course and I was sort of thinking I know what, I'll just hang up my boots now and let the old boy drive but I thought no, nope, I've come here to go racing I'm going to carry on racing and in the end I thoroughly enjoyed it then hand the reins over to the old boy Good Great day. stuff, great stuff then uh, Aston you took over this morning, conditions a bit slippery this morning but obviously drying out as the day's gone on you've managed to push on and uh, show the old man how it's done <laughs> I wouldn't say <laughs> quite that, no it's been, um, the first run this morning was uh, well, very, very slippy, so we had some scrap tyres on, and so the second run I put new, brand spanking new tyres on again, and uh, transformed the car, and just got a lot more grip, and be able to push on, and then, like I said, this afternoon, about after lunch, back right off, well, I didn't say back off, we weren't pushing hard enough, because there's no point, because we're not going to gain a position, and I say, unfortunately, Simon Adams had a wheel fall off, and I went past him on the stage and see that, and I was like, ah, oh, massive relief, so we just back right off then, and that's that, and it's been a really good day. Um, Marshall's done a fantastic job as per usual, and the organisers running the event really well. And uh, of course, Guy Smith building a bloody good car and getting us to the end as per. So, yeah. Eyes on the championship now as the crews head to Stainby in Lincolnshire in a few weeks' time.
we'll of course be there to bring you all of the action with the official coverage. And in the meantime, you can catch up with previous rounds on our social media. Thank you for watching Special Stage.